Hello, everyone, and welcome to Disney WTF, where we talk about what's the fuss about Disney. This is episode 23, and for those that don't know us by now, we're a Disney couple. One of us is a Disney lover, and another is a Disney... We used to say hater, but it's more of just like, I'm just not understanding everything, what's going on here. You're a Disney non-understander. Yes. But somehow, we have made a way to make this relationship work. Yeah. And we're in episode 23. How crazy is that? Yes. So... 23, that's Jordan's number. So we are right now on episode Air Jordan. Does that mean we're at the pinnacle of our career? No, definitely not. That means we're about to start some crazy dynasty. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what this means. That's super positive. <laughs> yes. And uh, another night episode, but we got some cool new lighting going on. So To make it not so nighttime. Exactly. Make yeah. it more fluorescent. Yes. Yeah. So I'm excited about the new sunroom studio setup. I think we need to say sunroom studios more often, even yeah. though it's more often like nighttime studios. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, headlines. All right. So my first headline is actually more of a dirty rumor, I'm going to say. Okay. Do you remember on the Jungle Cruise episode when you asked how did Jungle Cruise have different versions or anything like that? And I said, yes, Jingle Cruise. Yes. Allegedly, Jingle Cruise may not be returning this year. Really? Yeah. That's scandalous. It is scandalous. It hasn't been officially announced, but some of the news outlets, the Disney news outlets, have Mm -hmm. said that it may or may not be returning this year. Hmm. Interesting. Which is unfortunate because you couldn't experience Jingle Cruise. And I actually only ever experienced it one time in person. Hmm. Yeah. Jingle Cruise. Yeah. So Well, I'm sure it's on YouTube maybe. Like maybe. Oh no, of course it is. It's it's definitely available on YouTube. But it's it's a matter of experience, the jokes and you know, the Christmas vibes and the decorations all at once in person. I get it. But what are you gonna do? I mean, it's Change happens, yeah. as we as we know. Yeah. Every single episode, change happens. Um, okay, my next headline. Of course, Epcot's 35th anniversary happened. Yes, it did. Yeah, and it was a super big production mm-hmm. held by Disney. I mean, they had buttons that said, I was there. Yeah. And they looked super cool. They were like a melding of old school Epcot mixed with the new it, it was just a really really cool button yeah I, I, it was just a free button but i it was saw so cool. i saw on instagram that they had like they had the magic band when you when you beep it onto the machine thing it's it'll say something mm-hmm. yeah what did it say what was a quote reflections of earth yeah that was pretty cool it's like a special edition uh when you scan your when you scan your magic band reflections of earth <laughs> and then they had like a bunch of cool fireworks show, which I think we I think we announced, right? Mm-hmm. Did we talk about the fireworks show, which they had? Yeah, so okay. Illuminations, which normally happens at the end of every day at Epcot, had a special 35th edition, a 35th anniversary edition yeah. of, of Illuminations. And actually, you, what you heard with the Magic Band, Illuminations, the full title is Illuminations, colon, Reflections of Earth. Oh, okay. There mm-hmm. you go. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it looked like a ton of fun. We we had friends of friends who went, and they said it was incredibly crowded. <laughs> yeah, well, I could imagine. <laughs> and, and I asked my brother, hey, Matt, did you go? And he's like, no, too hot, too crowded. Yeah. But, you see, he's smart because he didn't go, but he had friends who went who got him the commemorative items. Yeah. I wonder, though, do you know what it was like five years ago? No, I don't. Because I feel like, you know, 35 is a fairly random number. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it's rounded in terms of like, you know, five and tens. But I just think it's a huge like they made a really big deal out of 35. They did. And I feel like, you know, but that's Disney, though, because it's it's very calculated because they know that they are at a certain time in their Disney timeline, let's say, Mm -hmm. where they know if they get all this stuff going and they hype it up enough that they're going to get a lot of people who are going to go and who are going to make a big deal out of this also. I mean, really, more than anything, although 35 is a random number, it is the best publicity stunt that Epcot has seen in many years, especially for a park that's undergoing so many changes right now. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why, like, you know. And I was like, you know what? We haven't done anything for Epcot in a while. Let's give it some love. (laughs) 35 sounds like a good number. Let's do it. 35 is a good number. I'll be 35 soon. Yeah. One day. One day. But. As we all will be at some point in our lives. Well, yes, one day. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I mean, it seemed like a crazy event. I mean, they got me. I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Like, and I had major FOMO yesterday scrolling through Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. what is to see the brochures, the t-shirt, like mostly merchandise, obviously. Like, because that's why we're really all there. It's for merchandise and food. So but we'll still be able to see all that stuff, right, when we go? I don't think so. I think All it was the merchandise one, will be gone? I, I feel like a lot of it said I was there, which means that, I mean, who knows? I, I really yeah. don't know. But mm -hmm. it was so much like about October first yeah that it might not be there when we when we go interesting but anywho i mean kudos to everybody who made it out there made the the journey to mm -hmm. through the busy crowds and were able to enjoy themselves and mm -hmm. that's it sounds pretty awesome so do you are you done with headlines your headlines i had one more okay let's hear it because i have something i want to talk about you have a headline kind of okay yes well my last headline it is, is about hollywood studios so we actually kind of scrolled through three different parts today that's pretty mm -hmm. cool hollywood studios grand avenue has opened which you probably don't remember is the refurbished area of streets of america mm -hmm. so now grand avenue is this this beautifully renovated walkthrough area that has a new restaurant called Baseline Tap House and it has tapas and California, California craft beers and it looks super awesome. We have to go. Mm -hmm. But it opened and it was actually revealed a little bit early because when the hurricane hit, they had to take down all the scrim, which are the, the tarps that they cover up the area with. Mm -hmm. So we kind of got a glimpse to see what it looks like. But I'm telling you, even though we got that early glimpse, it looks totally amazing right now. Yeah. Totally different from what it looked like just before the hurricane. So that's open. Take a walk through Hollywood Studios if you guys get a chance and let us know how you like it. Yeah. So my headline is, so today was super tragic day. So the, the time of recording was the day that we heard the news of the Las Vegas uh, uh, shooting, which was super, super terrible and super scary. Mm -hmm. So Obviously, it's not a headline at this point, but it's more so I kind of wanted to meant, like talk about like safety at Disney. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to give a, a, a tip that I have for, you know, anyone that this like affects and makes them scared about going to large gatherings or going to events and things like that. And that's the uh, that's the advent of the, there's there's something called a, a sleeve that you can put like it's a Kevlar sleeve that you can put inside of like book bags and like you know can bags even and things like that and it actually they actually have some that serve as uh, bulletproof ratings so you can actually take these into the park with you if you feel that you know you want to feel just like extra safe and protected in a potential you know dangerous situation which hopefully would never happen and absolutely you know would be the absolute worst case scenario especially at a place like disney but i just wanted to let everybody know that you know in, in times like this people do get scared and people do you know, want to avoid large gatherings or they feel unsafe at certain places, but just to try to help ease, you know, that type of feeling, I think there's a, um, you know, there's a, there's a, I don't know what better thing to call it, but like an accessory that you can get to help you and your family feel more safe. And it's like a Kevlar bulletproof sleeve that you can put inside of a book bag mm -hmm. for either yourself or your kids to serve as a shield in case of you know, like the horrible unexpected happens. Yeah, and it definitely brings attention to a place like Disney where there's mass gatherings every single day yeah. of the whole year, you yeah. know? It makes me wonder too about what type of like security detail they do that we don't see. Yeah, we see the metal detectors, we open up our bags, this mm -hmm. and that, but you know, what are they doing on the outside of Magic Kingdom, let's say, that yeah. that we don't see, what, sort of, what sorts of daily tasks do they have to do to make sure that this park is safe for everybody to enjoy yeah because i mean you know these people are these people that do these things when they lose it or, or whether it's like you know when these people do these terrible acts they don't care about like who it's happening to who they're killing or where it's happening and you know like you know the last this las vegas incident was at a you know, a concert, a country music concert. Mm -hmm. The last really big shooting was at, um, you know, the nightclub. Mm -hmm. There's been at churches and it just really could happen anywhere. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, some people feel that, you know, they might not be safe everywhere they go. But I think, you know, getting something to make you feel more safe, especially when you go to these places like Disney or whether you're going to a sporting event or things like that, um, you can get something to feel, you know, just a tad bit more safer for, to protect yourself at least. Cool. 
Well, thanks so, for the tip. No problem. Hopefully it helps somebody. <laughs> All right. So we're going to switch gears and we're going to go into today's topic. Yes. So earlier today, I asked you, what is your favorite Disney ride? Yes, you did. What is it? Well, you, you said specifically thrill ride. So the one that I really thought about just came to mind that I thought was really fun and it's thrilling to me, at least is Mount Everest. Okay. So. And this was, it's interesting because this is like a ride that I don't have to convince you to like. I don't have to convince you to appreciate it, like going on it, like Carousel of Progress, let's say, where we're just kind of going around. Yeah, it's like a given or I'm just definitely going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So today I wanted to give you information about why... Expedition Everest, which is what it's officially called, Mm -hmm. is so much more than just a thrill ride that you're always going to do when you're in Animal Kingdom. Okay. Okay. So first of all, I wanted to start off with the stats. So Expedition Everest opened in 2006 and it's 199 feet tall. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but we kind of talked about how if something is over a certain height in Florida. It has to have a blinking red light for low flying planes. It's 200 feet, isn't it's it? It's 200 oh feet. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, that was a limitation. I wonder if they would have, I wonder if like they wanted it bigger. I mean, bigger is always better, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I wonder if it's like, ah, 199, you know, like. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but when I'm riding it, I feel like that drop is pretty sizable. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a good height yeah. for what it is. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. And the Imagineers who put the ride together, it took them six years to research, develop, and build this ride. And that included multiple trips to the Himalayas, which is where Mount Everest is. So they went there for research to do this? Mm -hmm. Was it, it was to set up like the inside part or to set up the actual ride? It's... It's all about the theming of the whole area. Uh So it's not even just the mountain, but it's the whole area that is surrounding Mount uh, Expedition Everest, the ride. Yeah. So literally multiple trips to Asia to explore what Nepal and the base of Mount Everest is Mm -hmm. to get the feel for the people, the the culture, the artifacts that they might need. Mm -hmm. They went there to make sure that it would be as authentic as possible for what they wanted to achieve in Walt Disney World. Yeah. Yeah. So that's crazy because how cool is that? Like of a job, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm going to go travel so I can research how to best theme this Disney ride. (laughs) Like that's such a cool job. Are they all engineers? I think for the most part they are engineers. I mean, think about, I mean, just Imagineers. It's, it's, well, I'm wondering like if you can just be so good at like what you do, he's like, yep. Honor Imagineer. I think there are people who kind of rose through the ranks and then eventually did become Imagineers because there's more to being Imagineer than just, you know, thinking about the the physics and actual building of the ride. Yeah. It's it's all about the story. Like, that's what Imagineers do as well. Yeah, it's like magical. Like, because, you know, you think about most engineers, you don't think about them being like magical Disney, you know, at least in my mind. Mm -hmm. You just think them like science, like math and... Yeah. You know, just real scientific and stuff. Whereas like real Disney magic is really zero science to it. Kinda. Which when I, when I was in, before I decided to go to in, into pharmacy, mm-hmm. I did major in engineering for one oh, semester. Okay. That's a fun fact. Yeah. I did not know. I know. Surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. With the hopes of actually becoming an Imagineer. Really? Yeah. But it, engineering is not for me. Yeah. And my mind wasn't as expanded into all but these different But maybe Imagineering fields. is. Well, maybe. We'll figure that out. All right. Maybe it is. I got to write down some ideas I have for us later. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was, yeah, fun fact about me. Yeah. But it didn't work out, obviously. It went another direction. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't just really to, to figure out the, the mountain itself, which it definitely gave an idea for the Imagineers to say, this is, you know, where the snow peak starts and this is kind of the layout of the crags that we want. It's not really a replica of Mount Everest itself. Mm-hmm. They do specify that it's its own entity because they didn't want to replicate this mountain that already exists. They wanted to create something that could be in the Himalayas. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it definitely achieves that. If you look at it, it's like the snow and it's cragged and nobody would ever want to climb it, but people do for some reason. Yeah. So yeah. And the top speed, what do you think it is? Top speed, 50 miles per hour. How 
did you know that? That was a that straight is, guess. That is exactly what it is. That was a straight guess. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you you wizard. <laughs> that's funny. I don't understand. Wow, so it goes 50 miles per hour? That's like the top speed? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's it pretty is. fast. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's terrifying, actually. Especially when you think, like, we're not wearing helmets. Yeah. There are no doors. Yeah. We have a lap bar, but that's about it. There's no, like, seatbelt click. I know. You know, usually well, that's, like, a good sign of safety, <laughs> like a seatbelt click. But you know what? The lap bars do click. Yeah, but it's not like a like a buckle going into, like, with straps, like, to really make you feel secure or, like, I don't know. Like, usually when a bar just kind of, cr like, creeps down on you, it's not, like, enough. But, like, usually when you have, like, full vest and clicking motion, like, in between the legs, that's, like, when you're, like, all right, we're going to go fast and I'm safe. Yeah. Which I feel like now is, since you're bringing up safety harnesses and roller coasters, I feel like now is a good time to mention when we went to... When we went to uh, Japan for the first time, we went to a theme park at the base of Mount Fuji, which was one of the coolest theme park experiences we've ever had. Yeah. All the roller coasters there are so intense, yes. but the harnesses are equally intense. Yes. So much so that the workers there will get on top of you just to push down the harnesses yeah. way more than what you can do on your own. Yeah, those things are insane. Yeah. Fuji Q. Yeah, Mount Fuji Q. Yes. If anybody goes, it's really awesome. They should theme that. Disney should theme that. Over it's here. themed as Mount Fuji. No, I meant like they should make a, uh, just as how they did Mount Everest. Oh, Their like, next mountain like oh. venture of a, of a theme should be based on Mount Fuji Q. That'd be, That'd cool. be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, based on Mount Fuji. Yes. yes yeah. That's what I meant. Exactly. And okay, before we get more into the detail of the story, I just want to say like on a personal note, as a Disney fan, like, it's hard to say that this would be, like, the most thrilling or my favorite thrill experience at Disney World because so much of what we feel is in nostalgia, but it is so much of a thrilling ride that I really, like, want it to be, mm -hmm. like, the best thrill experience at Disney. Yeah. But there's so many more things Other to do. things, yeah. Yeah. So, but it is one of my favorites. Yeah. And you know what it is, too? It's, like, it's a relatively newer experience mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things i mean 2006 but it's just so well themed and every time like disney comes out with something new and, and this is also evidenced by the, like pandora opening mm -hmm. it's just so much more richly detailed than the next thing the last thing that they did it's it's really really amazing yeah i remember my first time writing this with you and i remember seeing that there's just like so much stuff but then the biggest part, the most fascinating part of it all was how fascinated you were by it. <laughs> Whereas to me, it was just like a bunch of random stuff. But to you, it was like, look at all this stuff, you know, like, <laughs> and I was look like, what is the big, it. like, I was literally like, what the F is going on here? Like, WTF, about, like, what's the fuss yeah. about all this stuff? But, um, so I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're going, you know, more into detail. Yeah. So actually, the whole theming of Expedition Everest doesn't even start when you get in the queue or when you're on the ride. It starts way, way out at the beginning of Asia, the land that it's housed in. Yeah. So Disney created a fictional kingdom mm -hmm. that that where Expedition Everest lies, and it's called Anandapur. Okay. And it's it's completely this completely made up by Disney. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually like like, like something, something that ex yeah exactly yeah. but it's replicated after these these villages and these towns that are in these countries that are at the base of the himalayas oh, okay. and something that they that they mention is that when you are approaching anandapur you see that the the village that you're you're walking into is very chaotic and busy and if you look at the ground there's tire marks and animal hoof prints hmm. to represent that this is a working village yeah and even more so so there's the fictional kingdom but the village that it's housed in is called zirka zong zirka zong oh okay cool so you think about that rich of a storyline where it's not just a village that Expedition Everest lies, but mm -hmm. it's a village within a kingdom yeah. that they tell you the story of. Yeah. And not explicitly, of course, because, you know, you don't hear it over a PA or anything, yeah. but it's it just exists that's what I'm gonna for ask. you to discover. Like, yeah, like, that's what that's that was a question I was just about to ask you. Like, where is this, you know, like, how do people discover this, really? Like, how, how does an individual like myself discover that by just going there? 
I think a lot of it, if you were there, for instance, and you didn't know, I, you could ask a cast member. And you can say, well, what is all this supposed to be? Like, why is all of this the way it is? And they would probably be able to tell you a detailed account of where you are yeah. and why it is what it is. Yeah, but the problem is, is that that's one of those things that you don't know what you don't know, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know to ask, like, why is this like this? Like, people just show and be like, oh, this looks nice. Yeah. You know, but like never would you really get to like for a first timer or someone that, you know, for, for you know, obviously like I guess a first timer. But I bet a lot would, of people do and you maybe don't, don't realize it because you didn't ask. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> I'm a first timer <laughs> though. I just feel like I feel like I'm a solid representation of, you know, the fact that because I've been on that ride multiple times. You have. Right. And never once did it uh, occur to me to think like, hmm, I wonder if this is a, you know, village within a kingdom you know like <laughs> what do you mean it didn't so i don't know i feel like i wonder if how would they should they get that out more or do you think it's better that no one really knows i you know what i don't think necessarily i don't think that it's necessarily better that no one really knows but i think that it's it's one of those subtle things that the more you discover about about it the more you appreciate it and the love grows for it yeah. and i think that without the storyline being there even those who, you know, it, it's not necessarily meant to be like, oh, you have to you have to know to ask or anything. But it's realizing that if it wasn't there, something would be different. Like it wouldn't be what it is today and how like you feel when you walk into into the Anandapur. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, you know, you don't need to know all these details necessarily to feel what you would feel if you were to go to these actual villages in Asia. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I think that's exactly what the Imagineers were trying to do, and they totally accomplished it. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, but the story gets way deeper actually okay. than what we've already discussed, <laughs> okay. what we've already done. So, the the village that it's housed in, the original income of the village was based on tea harvesting, tea harvesting in the mountain. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is harvest the tea and they would use the train in the mountain to bring it down and then, you know, sell and trade and this and that. And so a lot of the buildings that you see at the base, like in at the base of the mountain in the village are tea themed because they are tea traders. So most of the buildings that are now housed by expedition teams mm -hmm. were originally housed with tea traders. Huh. And so if you think about like what the 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 train itself within the mountain was originally doing bringing tea down and now it's bringing trekkers up hmm. to trek down the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that's like that's basically why you're there. For what? Like when you cuz you said that the ride is taking the people up. Oh, so I forgot to mention this. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is my fault. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the confusion is apparent. So now what the villagers have discovered is that they can make such a good income off of, instead of tea trading, is to host expedition teams to go to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And so the particular expedition quest that we go on was originally called it was originally called an Andapur tea company okay okay and subsequently expedition everest the company who is owned by entrepreneurs that have actual names bob and norbu have taken over that tea company building and are now hosting expeditions up the mountain okay so i mean it's, it just goes to show you all these details, like the rich storyline that's all behind this ride that you will go on no matter what because it's super fun. Yeah. Is so, richly, richly themed so throughout this. We are we are people when we when we're in line and we're we're in line to go ride the 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 expedition, mm -hmm. we are going to get tea? No. Because they've converted the tea business into an expedition company. Well, what does an expedition company do? They take people who want to climb mountains up the mountain. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so it's like a hike. 
Yeah, okay. like a hike. <laughs> I mean, you think there. about like you know, it's what they do in Everest. They have companies all around, like it's the like base. A tour. Yeah. To yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Like yeah. it's a tour. Yeah, tour no. Cool. Okay, that's interesting. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Learning a bunch of stuff here. That I'm sure a bunch of people didn't know. Yeah. Or maybe so, I'm the only one. What? What? Or maybe I'm the only one. No, I mean I I didn't know a lot of this. Yeah. Like yeah. it took a, a long time to like discover this piece by piece, and then I really really researched it for this conversation. And yeah. I'm like I'm still blown away. Yeah. By so crazy. much like Bob Norbu. Yeah. No way. I had how no idea they, they own this. Yeah. And how did they get in on this? Like how how did they know that it was like you know to take over? Did they buy it over? So I have so many questions now. Yeah. Like what? Like what? Why did the tea business go under? Did it go bankrupt? Maybe. Did it sell for like a good profit and they like retired? Hmm. Like <laughs> that is information that I do not know. Yeah, no. <laughs> information for another time, yeah. I suppose. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the now the train was repurposed to bring people up instead of taking tea down. I mean, that's I think one of the biggest facts that blew my mind. Yeah, that it it was originally used to take tea down and now it's bringing people up. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I'm gonna bring like I wanna wear like a shirt, like a I'm a tea guy. <laughs> like going on this. Like I'm I'm here for the tea actually. I'm here for the tea and it's a picture <laughs> yeah. of like the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> that suggestion would be such, box. Yeah, that would be such good uh oh, suggestion box. That would be such good uh like I don't know like I don't say fan favorite, but like culture, you know, like a culture prop. A culture prop? Yeah, and like like a cult favorite? I don't, yeah, I don't say cold favorite like a like a t-shirt that's like you know it's an in t-shirt like you'll only get it like if you really know the story, and you know someone seems like oh I get it you know like <laughs> I don't know. Well, okay. <laughs> so now we're out of the village and we're going into the queue and I know that I went over the queue. And inside I was secret. Like, that's what I was thinking the word is. It'd be like an inside secret shirt. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I no, I to, like it. It didn't come to me. It just came to me. I like it. I think, <laughs> okay, it's, I think yeah. it's a good idea. <laughs> Here for the tea. <laughs> Anywho. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so you're in the queue. And I know that I've told you like a zillion times that yeah. when you are in the queue, you go through a temple. You go through a museum yeah. that the Imagineers have handcrafted to put you there, mm -hmm. to put you where in the Himalayas that, that this would represent. Okay. And it actually has a lot of artifacts and pictures mm -hmm. that the Imagineers literally brought back from the Himalayas. So the things that you see are genuine. Oh wow, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and the pictures that you see on the wall were taken by Imagineers mm -hmm. of the people who are actually there, you know, as tour guides yeah. in in Asia. In the future, that can all just be like 3D printed. But I'm really glad that it's original. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, don't want to save money. To be, but you know what? Authenticity. I mean, they probably saved a lot of money because I'm sure the trade exchange rate is perfectly okay. Yeah. But that's so it's all original stuff that's there. So like all the yeah, pictures and is. stuff, like mm -hmm. those are all real pictures of people. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. None of them are actors pretending to be Sherpas that are yeah. taking you up a mountain, but they're real pictures. Mm -hmm. It's like a museum in there then. No, it is. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's literally supposed to be a museum. Okay. Interesting. So, I do want to get to something that's the elephant in the room, but it's actually the Yeti in the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I put that in there. I just thought of that transition too. Good. So the Yeti, when you are on the ride, do you recall being attacked by the Yeti? Yeah, Cause I yeah. remember you being really scared. Yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I told you at the time, but you may or may not remember that Yeti isn't in its state right now is not really what it's supposed to be. Okay. So it is the largest animatronic ever built by Walt Disney Imagineering. Hmm. The largest. But when it was originally in incarnated, it had a moving body so much so that you literally felt like it was going to come at you and attack you. Mm -hmm. And that was what it was called operating in A mode. But now it's operating in B mode, which what means it's not moving very much. What happened? I think that they had technical problems to actually keep it functional. Mm -hmm. And because of where it's situated inside the mountain, that it's very difficult to actually operate on it when it goes down. Yeah. 
Mm, so now it's a lot of strobe lights and it's still terrifying. I, I, I duck every single time. You see like an arm come down like about to club you, I think. Yeah. yeah it's really scary. It is going to club you probably <laughs> if you don't duck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a really big feat of engineering within that mountain. Amongst, amongst all the imagineering and storyline, they mm. decided, let's go ahead and build the biggest animatronic of all Disney history yeah. in this ride. Mm. So it's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And I mean, that's really kind of the, the end to my explanation of, of the ride to yeah. you. But I think it's it's one of those things that I have to bring up. Like, think about Walt's love of trains, and this is just another train added to his his land, you know? Yeah, that's true. In his world. Hmm. I don't think about the whole train thing. It's a solid connection. Yeah. He did love trains. Mm-hmm. And not only that, like, I think about... I asked you, too, before we started, like, you know, Expedition Everest is your favorite thrill ride, but the second most is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, mm-hmm. another train. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the roller coasters are train rides, technically, though. Mm, so, I don't know. Space Mountain? But um, I wonder, though, oh, speaking of rock train and roller rides, coaster with Aerosmith? That's a car. I wonder what uh, Walt's favorite ride was. Like, I wonder what his favorite was. Like, before. Like, that was created, you know. During, while he was still with us. Alive. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. That is a great question. I wonder if, I wonder if my best friend Google has it. Yeah. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. I'll follow up with you. Mm. Um, yeah, I just, I love that ride. It's, I mean, it really well themed. Mm -hmm. They have that cool thing where you throw the penny in, you can make a wish too. And I always miss. Yeah. The bell, the bells are quite annoying though. I'm not going to lie. Are they? I love them. I know, but it's like, cause you know what the problem is? And it just, and it, for some reason it always happens. There's just one person that hits a bell (laughs) and then that's it. It's like for the next 30 minutes, it's just straight bells ringing. It's like silence up until that <laughs> yeah. one person hits that the bell. That one dude like launches it and like, it's like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And like bell starts ringing and then that's it. It's over. It no, was it's fun though. It's fun though. Yeah, right. Yeah. You hate it. <laughs> you hate the bells. No. But yeah, that's all yeah. I got. Cool. All right. Well, I hope everyone got as much out of this episode as I did. You know, the theming of Mount Everest is insane. Expedition Everest. The theming of Expedition Everest is insane. And um, if you're listening right now on iTunes, please do us a huge favor and leave us a rating. Let us know what you think. Uh, We're also on SoundCloud for anyone that's listening there as well. Uh, We got YouTube up. So again, in the Sunroom Studios, there's new lighting. So, you know, if you're watching, hopefully on YouTube, you'll, you like the new lighting, leave us a, uh, leave us a like and a comment and please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Yeah. We're also available on Instagram, DisneyWTF.radio and medium, medium medium.com backslash DisneyWTF. If you want to read about some Disney stuff. She has some really cool articles on there about her thoughts on, um, you know, Disney related things. And, uh, medium is really cool. Medium is a cool place to, you know, blog and write articles and learn things and it's a really cool uh, platform. website uh, yeah. platform to, to use so if you haven't heard about medium.com definitely check it out yeah and as always thank you guys so much for tuning in we so very much appreciate it especially me and thank you so much for watching we hope you guys have a very 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 magical day goodbye